Welcome back, Mathletes. So we have our first lesson of our new chapter all about geometry and shapes and measurements. Today we'll be learning about circumference of the circle shape and then also a semi-circle shape. So anything basically with curves on it is what our focus is for our first lesson. We'll be using a lot of key vocabulary words, um, the first of which are diameter and radius. Then we'll be talking about what is a circumference and then how do we find it. And then once we've measured that circumference, how do we label those measurement values? So one of our circle parts or two of our circle parts are diameter and radius. What exactly are those? Take a peek at textbook page 240 to see what in the world is a diameter and what in the world is a radius. We'll pause the video while you look to learn. So you can see based on the picture here in our textbook that they show the radius is the red line and they tell us that it's the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the outside edge of the circle. Think of it as being like the spoke on a bike tire. So they start in the center and then they branch out to all the edges and they really hold the wheel in a circle, circular shape. The diameter goes across the circle but it goes through the center as well. So think of this as uh, just kind of cutting the circle in half, really. So when you are cutting a pizza and you just roll it right across and you try and hit that center, that would be a diameter. They give us some words and some algebra to kind of show this idea here, where in relationship to each other, one is twice or one is half. So we've got uh, key vocabulary, and you have this on your handy-dandy handout. So you can refer to the vocabulary here for the circumference, diameter, and radius values. Diameter is that distance across the circle, goes through the center. And then the radius starts in the center and touches any outside edge. So it could be like the spinner on a wheel that just kind of keeps spinning around and around and around. When we talk about circumference, we're talking about that outside edge of a circle, which is like perimeter. What's the relationship between a diameter and a radius? So if we look between the two of them, one radius plus one more radius gives you that total diameter distance. So even if our radius came from the center like this, if we extended them, they would cut the circle in half. And that's really what the job of a diameter is. So a diameter would go across and through the center, any outside point through that center, back out the other side. A radius starts in the center and touches an outside edge or goes from an outside edge just into the center. But because these pieces can kind of move, once we have extended one radius, we really end up with a diameter. If we cut this diameter into two pieces here right in the center, we really end up with two radii. So just like the word cactus is really cacti, radius means many radii. So we're going to practice just finding these parts and measuring how big they would be. So if the circle has a diameter of 16 inches, that means that from one side through the center back out all the way across is 16. Well, I know that a radius is really just half a diameter. So if the diameter is 16, I'm really thinking, what's half of 16? or 16 divided by 2, and I find that it's 8, and my label is just plain inches, because if 16 inches gets me all the way across, then 8 inches gets me to the center. We'll give you one of these to try. Your job is to find the radius of your circle. The diameter is 12 meters. Remember to label. So I hope you said that if 12 gets me all the way across, then 6 meters gets me half the way across. Take that 12 distance, divide it into two parts, and that's going to give you one of your radius values. Remember that the radius is just that section, not all the way. Let's find the other measurement. So if the 
um, circle has a radius, what would be the diameter? Well, here, if we take the radius and we double it, two times the radius is going to give me a diameter. So in this situation, my radius from here to here is 3. Then I really need to do 2 times 3. And I know that that's 6, so my diameter would be 6 labeled plane meters. If 3 gets me half of the way across, then another 3 gets me the rest of the way, and a 3 and a 3 gives me 6. We'll give you one to try. Your job is to find the diameter. Your circle has a radius measuring 9 millimeters. Super tiny. So if 9 millimeters gets me part of the way across, and another 9 millimeters gets me all the way across, then two nines gets me 18. So it would be 18 millimeters all the way across as my D diameter. How would you do on that one? Feeling pretty comfortable with some circle parts? So our other vocabulary on your handout is the value of pi. And pi is represented by the symbol, um, kind of looks like a tabletop with two legs. Um, some people draw it kind of squiggly like that with two legs coming down. Really depends on the computer font that you've chosen for what it's really going to look like. It may just look like straight across, two lines down like that as well. So pi has a value of about 3.14. Now, the decimals do keep going, but there's really not a pattern to the repeat of it. And so that's why pi is always just cut at like 3.14. So we will use the 3.14 decimal anytime we're talking about the value of pi. So uh, when we're comparing our circumference of a circle to the diameter of the circle, then the measurement is three times across plus a little bit of extra. Um, so there's a, a way that the scientists and mathematicians have discovered the value approximately of pi, and it's by measuring the circle. So um, then we also have another key vocabulary, and that would be our semicircle. And the word semi just means half. So when we're talking about like a semi-truck, semi-trucks have this big cargo pink thing at the end, and then we've got the driver spot here. So without this um, carrier box in the back of the semi-truck, it really just looks like a little truck, like a half of a truck, because it's kind of missing the back part of it. So semi just means half, and a circle is a circle. So half of a circle. Notice that a semicircle gets cut on any diameter. You cut it in a diameter, that's the same thing as like folding it into two parts there. So there's a formula that's used to make everybody's life a little bit easier when trying to discover the circumference of a circle. So if the circumference of the circle is the outside measurement, it's really perimeter that we're looking for. The reason we don't call it perimeter is because perimeter represents things with flat edges. And we know that there is nothing flat about the outside edge of a circle. It's curvy. So instead of calling it perimeter, like we did with triangles, rectangles, squares, we're going to call it circumference. But it's really the outside edge of a circle. So how do I measure the outside edge of a circle? Well, if it's curvy, it's really hard to measure it with a ruler because I can't roll this around the outside edge. So instead, there's a formula that's used. And the formula is used um, no matter what kind of circle we have, no matter what size the circle is. And we'll talk about how we label our answers as well. So on textbook page 241, they do show us in algebra these two formula options. And each of these letters represents something in the circle world. So the C that is part of our formula is just short for circumference. So C equals or circumference is pi, which we know is approximately 3.14, times the diameter of the circle. So if I know the diameter of the circle, all I have to do is multiply that number by 3.14, which is the approximate value of pi. 
And then, ta-da, I'll have my circumference measurement already done. The other option is to double your radius because that's the same thing as getting a diameter. So if we did two groups of pi times r, then that makes up for the other radius, which gives me a diameter. So we can either double our radius to get a diameter or just use the diameter number and multiply by pi. Let's jot this down on your handout so that you'll have this information as a formula. So find the first column where it's talking about circumference of circles and we're looking at the shape of a full circle. And our formula is C stands for circumference equals, now here comes our symbol, pi multiply by D. So when we put that symbol of pi next to the variable of d, if there's not a symbol between them, remember that's a fancy way of showing multiplication. I'm going to write my formula with a multiply symbol in between them so I remember to multiply. My other option is to call it 2 times pi times r. If we double this radius here, that's really the same thing as having a diameter. So there's two different formulas that you can use. Once we've chosen the formula for our circle, then we're going to substitute, which means swap out your uh, variables for the values that they're worth, depending on what the diameter or the radius measured. And then you're just going to solve the math problem. And we can use calculators to make that multiplication happen much faster, especially now that we know we're going to be using a 3.14 for this pi symbol. That's a lot of multiplying. We will label plain old units, nothing fancy. Because remember, when we did regular perimeter, it's really just one straight line. It's just flexible enough that it wraps around the outside edge of a shape. So let's use our formula in practice. I'm going to find the circumference of this circle. Now, the information I'm given is a D diameter that is 7. So I know all the way across is 7 inches. My formula that I'm going to use is C for circumference equals pi times d. Because I know the d diameter, I'm just going to use this formula. Now when I substitute, the c circumference is what I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find. I know pi is a 3.14 value. And now I'm going to multiply that by the d diameter, which they told me is 7 across the circle. So now all I have to do is a 3.14 times 7. So when I solve, I find 21.98 is the value I get after multiplying, and my label here would be just plain inches because it's really almost 22 inches of string wrapped around the circle. I'll give you a chance to try and use a circumference formula. We'll pause the video while you choose a formula, substitute the values that you do know, solve the math problem, and remember to label your answer as well. So the formula would have been just C equals pi times D. We're looking for the circumference because that's the question. And because we're given a diameter, I'm going to choose the formula that includes the diameter, not the radius. I substitute out pi for the 3.14 approximate value of pi. And I substitute out the d diameter variable for the 11 because this circle had a diameter across of 11. Do this multiplication, and a calculator will really help save us some time here. And then our label is just plain meters. It would take about 34 and a half meters of string or ribbon to wrap around this really big circle. How'd you do? Did you choose the right formula? So my next example here involves a circle, but this time I know the radius value. So this radius value is five. So the formula I'm going to use 
is 2 times pi times r. My other option is to use the pi times diameter formula, but double my radius and make it a 10. Because that's really what the 2 times the r is doing. It's getting this diameter. If one radius value is 5 and another radius value is another 5, then the total diameter across the circle is really a 10. So when I substitute, I'm just going to use 2 times 3.14 pi times my radius, which was 5. If I wanted to save myself a step, I could just double the radius and use this formula. And instead of using the 5 value, I'm going to use a 10 in here. When I do the multiplication, it's 2 times 3.14 times 5, which ends up being 31.4 or 31.40 would work. And my label is just plain centimeters because circumference is an outside edge, which is really just a one-dimensional line wrapped around the outside of any shape. So 31.4 centimeters. We'll give you another one. You find the circumference of your circle that has a radius of four centimeters. Remember, choose your formula, substitute the values in, do the math, and then remember to label your value. We'll pause the video while you work. So if you chose the formula 2 times pi times r as your circumference formula, then you would have substituted 2 times 3.14 times 4 because your radius was 4. From the center to the edge is only 4 centimeters. If you chose to use the diameter formula, you would have needed to double your radius to get a diameter of 8. Either way, the multiplication ends up being the same value. 25.12, and it's labeled centimeters. It would take a little bit more than 25 centimeters of string to wrap around the outside of this tiny circle. How'd you do on that one? Feeling comfortable using formulas? So we're going to spend some time practicing with our partners. There's four different levels. You're going to start on level one or level two, and when you get three in a row, you can level up. You're working together with your partner. And remember, I want to see your formulas, your substituted values, your solution or your answer. And don't forget those labels. Happy practicing.